What's up guys? So we're doing a one for all game. It's currently just released on the PBE. It's a new mode and basically how it works is uh, you just enter the uh, champion select like normal. However, every champ every uh, person gets to vote on a champion. And then the one who has the greatest amount of votes gets chosen and for us it was Gragas. However, if all five champions choose a different hero to play, if all five people choose a different uh, hero to play, then what happens is pretty much that it's randomly selected. And then it's different for each team. So as we as you can see, we have a Gragas, team of Graguses versus a team of uh, Darius's. Now, the biggest thing with this, oh, let me get that CS. Shoot, I missed him. I'm screwed. I'm good, I'm good, never mind. The biggest thing about this is that it's on the 5v5 map, which, like it or not, it's going to prompt people to actually go to their lanes like this game, uh, which is, I mean, it's up to the player, honestly. You can still do all mid if you wanted to. Um, I might die here. Let me just smart cast things properly. Okay, we're good. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing. Like in this game, we see what we have here is a you know two bot two top sort of matchup going on. Oh shoot, I'm dead. Oh, I missed both of those CS. This is not good. And one could reason that it's not as fun, but again, it's it's up to the the players. I went mid. I wanted to go mid regardless. Um, I would have preferred if we all went mid, but that wasn't the case here. And this Darius is going ham on me, and I'm out of items. By the way, I think the ward thing, you can see, like, for Season 4, we got the new ward stuff going here. I don't think it works yet. It's still glitched. Okay, no, it works now. Um, but yeah, that's the biggest thing. And then if he hits 6, he could all in me. And, like, I do no damage for some reason. Oh, he went Dorn's Blade. Oh, he's going all in. Thank God for the turret. You're gonna get to see us and, and hop out. Anyhow, I, th I think the only problem with this, like, I really don't think it's a problem. Um, people are gonna complain. They're gonna ask for it to be on the uh, ARAM map, otherwise known as the, um, what's it called? Uh, Howling Abyss map. But I really don't think it's a problem. Why? Because late game is going to be the same. In fact, it's in certain ways going to be cooler than the ARAM map because we have this whole thing, t this whole map to play with. We're going to have really cool, unique sort of 5v5 team fights. Ooh, he's going to get me? Nope. We're going to have really cool 5v5 team fights going on. And it's going to be pretty much contest, contest with Baron, um, contests with Dragon, buff contests that are only very unique and that can only happen on this map, which is why I think it's not too bad that it's going to be on ARAM. I mean, it's, it's going to be on this map. Uh, the biggest thing though is I think what would be best is if both maps were offered. Maybe also add in the, the ability to choose which map you want to play with. Or just like offer both and then add potentially a rank system for both. That may not work, but I think the biggest problem with this is the thing, the whole idea that if you choose like a melee champion like Darius or Gragas, then you're kind of stuck with a sort of noob meta where you have like two melees top and then two melees bot and then no jungler. I don't know, that may change. Like, you could still technically, um, you could definitely still, oh, is he 5 yet? No. Nope. I'm gonna go all in. Okay. Yeah, that's how we do. You could technically still have a jungler, like, I don't know, maybe once this gets released to the public, then it may be different. Maybe, like, the, the real professional meta, maybe, like, one Darius jungler, and then one solo top. We'll see what happens.
but as of right now, I feel like this meta is just, it's going to take too long. Like, none of them, none of these champions are good at sieging towers. And because of that, it's going to be a very slow lane. And in certain ways, people may not like that. They, they might prefer the fast-paced lifestyle. And the thing with ARAM is that it forces people to go all mid. And the problem with this one is that it doesn't force people to. So if you get a couple trolls on a team who want to go top or want to go jungle, you can't stop them from doing so. And that causes a lot of problems because it really slows down the game. It's, it's kind of like one of those bot games where people don't know what they're doing and it's just very slow paced. However, regardless, regardless, late game is still going to be a beast and it does hold some differences from the ARAM map because we have Baron to contest we have the jungle to play with and 5v5 fights are going to be ridiculous because um, pretty much we have walls to jump over we have a lot more terrain to play with pretty much and then I think the second biggest fault in this is that it's not a 10v10 all ARAM map because each team has to choose separately and we don't know what the other team is choosing. So we'll, we may, like if we do get that sort of, um, what do you call it? If we ever do get that 10v10 all of the same champion, it's pretty much randomized. Like. Um, I can show you the champion select on a, another video, but essentially what it is is it's pretty much like the standard champion champion select uh, blind pick mode. You have no idea what your enemies are choosing, therefore you can't coordinate a 10v10 all the same champion, and that's why what we have here is five Darius's versus um, pretty much five um, Gragas's. And certain people may not like that. They, they, some people definitely wanted something where you have ten of the same champion, and you you're forced mid, um, and they wanted that fast-paced sort of game. And the only way you can get that with the current one-for-all mode is pretty much if you luck out, if the other team just by chance happens to choose the same champion as you because the as of right now with the current map you can't tell like you really can't tell what the other champion is going to be you have no way of coordinating that uh, it looks like my team is doing horrid this guy sucks zero four yeah, we're probably gonna lose this. And so this uh, this is just like an example video to show you guys how it's going to work out. As you can see, it's already 10 minutes in, and it's going pretty slow. And in certain ways, like one could reason that it's it's harder to carry with this map because like you you can't really there's no jungle presence and. Even if you like crush one lane, like the other lanes are gonna do terrible. Like you want, you can reason that you can roam and stuff, but it's hard to do if your opponent's decent. Put this here. So by the way, this is a warding totem. It's gonna be released season four. Um, pretty much, it's a stealth ward. So I think it functions just like a pink ward. And but uh, the. the Typical wards will not be there anymore. Oh my goodness. I still got them. Yes, the, the typical wards were still there. By the way, the vision ward has been buffed, you could say. It only costs 100 gold now. And so that's going to be pretty good. But the difference is that there's a limit. You can only buy one per player. Oh, these are actually stealth wards. So these are vision wards, and then the sight wards have been renamed into stealth wards.
And that's pretty much how it's gonna go. I'm gonna stop talking now until something exciting happens. So peace out and enjoy this this map. Oh yeah, the other big thing is that as you can see it's for a lot of different reasons, it's more slow paced than the ARAM. And you know, as you can see it's already eleven minutes, but we're still in laning. You can technically even say that this this may be the longest map of the game. Why? Because it's pretty much like a 5v5, which is the longest sort of map mode in the game so far. Except longer because what we have here is melee champions top and bot, which makes sieging towers a lot more difficult. And so uh, stay if you like. I hope you guys enjoy this clip and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get to some better things late game, but it seems like such a pub stomp at this point that we may not even get to late game. I gotta wait until my cooldowns come up. I had to flash that. He burned his flash too. The reason why we're losing so bad, by the way, is that on an equal playing level, Darius will be a Gragas. Um, so if you have people who are just naturally like equal level of skill especially on the bronze the silver to unranked to gold level where their skill level isn't very high then if they're on like an equal skill level the Darius should win out why because his base stats should be able to beat out a Gragas even if you land your barrel and at this level most Graguses fail at landing their barrel and it's very easy for Darius. All he has to do is land his Q and then start autoing and he should win out most trades. Because, I mean, most people at this elo, they don't factor in certain things such as minion aggro or turret damage or zoning and so forth, which causes pretty much um, it to just be based on base stats and just who can counter who. So I don't know if it'll be worth it to roam down. Oh, did he, f he ignited me? I didn't want to go in there. Holy crap, dude! He went war mongs. This guy went war marks too. Oh uh, goodness, this, I don't think there's nothing. Is that enough with war marks? Yes. So here's another item that's been changed. Cage's pick, or Cage's lucky pick has been turned into Cage's pick. And the difference is that the passive now grants four gold every basic attack once every 10 seconds so you can say it's been nerfed because the GP 10 is l lower but you have a mana regen effect as well and a lower ability power and then you could say this basic this passive like one could say that this passive is better but I really feel like it's worse because, I mean, you're gaining 4 gold every 10 seconds. And that's assuming you hit a champion. So it's really only useful for laning. And even then, it's not that useful. This is not going well. This guy is so freaking tanky. 
Can I get away? Can I get away? Nope. Kill him. Why are you scared? So then Cage's Lucky Pig now upgrades into... Well, Cage's Pig upgrades into Cage's Lucky Pig, which does the same thing except it amps up everything from ability power to mana regen to gold pretend and this thing where spell or basic attack. Here it's just a basic attack, but here if a spell or basic attack lands on the champ, you gain a gold. Personally, I think it's only useful for laning because, quite frankly, it's pretty much a merging of the mastery from season three where uh, if you land a basic attack you gain like uh, two gold or something and I I use that frequently in season two and I found it only useful for season two oh here we go can we get him? So many Graguses. <laughs> Holy crap, dude. <laughs> Gang banged. <laughs> Look at this team. Gang. That's a team of, team of Gragas gang bang. <laughs> Alright, we gotta get to mid fast. And so, here's another, just another example of why I don't think this item is going to be that useful. Simply because, um... this one yeah simply because it's only useful for laning you rarely get to hit that sort of rate where you're uh, landing a spell or basic attack every 10 seconds on champion past the laning phase um, it just doesn't happen and so now this cage's lucky pick upgrades into shard of true ice which is the same item as before with a little bit of difference I think this used to be 60 ability power and the active on it is also different. So what it does now is it chills a target enemy and all nearby enemies which deals 50 magic damage which is nothing and then reduces its move speed by 50%. So it, it removes the AOE effect that it had season three. And on top of that, what it does is Um, it deals a little bit of damage and it does. it's pretty much a single target slow it's a lock on slow by the way the, the uh, brushes have changed as well which will completely change the gameplay this brush is very small and it doesn't wrap around and then this one as well is just very small so I think what this will do is it will make um, escaping and juking a lot harder because you don't have as much brush to play with as well as ward distance I don't it won't cover as much when you're placing a ward because usually if you have a ward here it'll span over the it'll create more vision because the brush is longer so what you want to do is avoid the warmog ones so we got two war mog ones with atmas. That's going to be a huge, huge threat. And then the others are building MR. So all of them are like pretty bad. This one, yeah. Oh shoot, I missed my ult. Holy crap. I think that may have cost us to kill. I'm flashing out. Later. 
Yeah, if I had hit my ult earlier, we wouldn't have gone one for one. Um, I wasn't expecting him to ult like that, which kind of cost us a kill. By the way, I forgot I had Zonyas, which is another bad thing. Shoot, I missed everything. Okay. Yeah, he's dead. This, this Kragus is dead. Run. The next biggest change with Season 4 is that you're limited to one GP10 item. Now, a lot of people are saying supports are being buffed tremendously in Season 4. However, with my experience with the PvE changes, I don't think it's that big a buff. Because in a lot of ways, they are nerfing supports, which I don't really understand. One of the biggest things I used to do in Season 3 was stack GP10 items on supports. So I'd have every single GP10 item, which I think was three. You had the Cage's Pick, you had the uh, Philosopher's Stone, and then you had the um, Sight Stone, which was a GP10 in and of itself. However, with the Season 3 changes, what's going to happen is that uh, you're, you're going to be limited to one GP10 item. And Riot's sort of reasoning behind this is that because we're only being limited to one GP10 item, they're going to quote unquote buff that GP10 item so that it has multiple upgrades. And on top of that, in certain ways, you can, in effect, gain more gold per 10 seconds with that item. However, I don't really think this is the case because. Oh, shoot. Holy crap, I don't know what to do here. Hold on, let me finish this. Oh my gosh. It's not going to be enough to kill him. I forgot to use my active. That active could have saved my life. And I, I didn't Zonyas in time. I knew I had Zonyas, but I thought I could wait a little bit longer. Anyhow, what was I saying? Yes. Uh, this GP10 item, I think it's like 4 gold per 10 seconds isn't really that great. I can't remember the Season 3 GP10. I think it was also like maybe it was 3 gold per 10 seconds, but that's not really that big a buff. And like... Quite honestly, this whole thing costs 2,000 gold just for this item. And I mean, sure, your, your stats get upgraded. So I don't know. We'll have to see if it's really that great above. My, my biggest fear is that uh, come season four, the, the support's role and amount of influence could potentially be lower or like, like equal. Holy crap. I didn't realize his damage output, so I waited too long on the Zonyas there. I knew I had Zonyas, but I thought I could wait a little bit longer. Um, so, yeah, my biggest fear is that the support items don't happen to do anything. And that would suck tremendously. Or the supports aren't as buffed as everyone is thinking and then it's all hype and then we end up getting supports that are barely buffed or potentially unintentionally nerfed to a certain point or potentially just similar to the range they were before oh shoot I missed it up shoot I missed Okay, that's how my Azania is early, but there's nothing that can be done there. Let's surrender this game. GG, well played. Wow, this guy has two Walmarts and so does this guy. These guys have to be double duo queues, I feel like.
I think I'm gonna have to take up the role of tank Gragas. So if we do survive, I'm just gonna go health and armor. And then hope that they're not too smart and avoid focusing me. Actually, I may go hybrid. Because if I go full tank, they're probably smart enough to just completely ignore me and then just kill the others, which isn't that hard to do, especially with the Darius ult. So I'm going to go hybrid, so I, I do damage as well as still be able to take it out. Yeah, I definitely think Darius is a little bit OP. Like They're so tanky, and yet they can still do so much damage. Um, as of right now, they, there's been a lot of requests for changes in Atmas to buff it because no one uses it. Um, I don't think it's changed so far. It's 45 armor, 50% crit strike, and then um, fifteen percent crit strike, and then then you get armor. You gain a AD based on fifteen percent, one point five percent of your max HP. So I think it's it's viable now. And that's the same thing with supports. I think supports are definitely viable as of season four. Uh, sure, they could definitely be buffed, but as of the current changes, I don't think I don't like them. Why? Because like I think the biggest problem with supports is that they pretty much, for the most part, they barely are able to afford many items by late game like if you look at competitive play at most you can get like a philosoph philosopher's stone and then the rest is just going to go into oracles wars and so forth however i'm gonna have to flash out here peace oh fuck And I don't know, we'll have to see. We'll see later on. Anyhow, this is it for the game. I'm going to stop talking now. Peace out. Thanks for watching.